Good afternoon. Welcome to the midnight briefing here at Casablanca. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I know. It's right. Whenever we brief past happy hour, it should be. It's, uh, all right. Sir, take us away. Thanks, Robert. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about what the president said when he met with the uh, Senate? <coughs> sure. Uh, the president uh, opened up the meeting. Uh, they had a, uh, and he spoke for uh, some period of time about uh, what is uh, the importance of getting this issue done, uh, that for generations we've talked about reforming our health care system, uh, and we're on the verge of making it happen. Uh, the president went through what's in the bill, uh, as you heard him do in his statement, uh, going through the fact that this is legislation that changes uh, uh, affordability and accessibility, that it bends the cost curve, uh, that it uh, helps our deficit, uh, that it reforms insurance practices, uh, that it provides uh, greater coverage for uh, 30 million Americans. Um, uh, then the president walked through uh, why he didn't think there was any better time than now to get this done. But did he wade into any of the specific negotiations that different versions that different senators are offering up? Mm -hmm. Well, look, th there wasn't a roll call at the meeting in terms of voting. Uh, they, I, I think it's safe to say that uh, after the president spoke, there was uh, Q and A from. Uh, Q&A and comments from uh, members uh, from across the political spectrum in the Democratic caucus. Did he leave the meeting more or less optimistic? I think the president left, uh, uh, as he said to you all, the, the meeting cautiously optimistic that we'd get something done. But more or less? Uh, I, I think more optimistic. Uh, I think that he believes uh, we are closer to getting this done than we ever have been. Uh, and he'll continue to work uh, through this process until uh, we see it through. We're all 60 there. Uh, I do not believe uh, I do not I do not believe Senator Byrd was there, and I'm not sure that Senator Johnson was there. Senator Lieberman, Senator Lieberman <laughs> was there. Yes, sir. Uh, Robert, when does the administration now want or expect to close Guantanamo Bay? Uh, I don't have a, a, a date certain to give you. Uh, I know the president believes that we've continued to make uh, progress. Obviously, the announcement today that uh, the President has instructed the Bureau of Prisons to begin the purchase of the Thompson facility in Illinois uh, is, uh, is a big step in that process of closing Guantanamo Bay. Can you give us any more details about how many <coughs> prisoners will be transferred to that prison? Senator Durbin said roughly 100. Is that, does that ring true? The, that's a, I wouldn't get in the way of contradicting him. Uh, I, I would say that obviously there's a, there will be a process uh, by which, uh, well, there's a process obviously ongoing now to review files. As you know, uh, those that uh, can be safely and securely uh, transferred either back to their home country or to a third country. Uh, more of those transfers have taken place uh, in the past eight months than have taken that took place in the previous eight years. Uh, so that process will continue. Uh, determinations, as you know, will be made at the Department of Justice as to the venue for uh, trying those uh, that need to answer for uh, their actions. Uh, and. Uh, they're going through those files as we speak. When you say you won't contradict him, does that mean that figure is roughly correct? I, I wouldn't. Uh, uh, I'd go with uh, Senator. I'd quote Senator Durbin on that. How about that? Can you explain <coughs> why that particular facility has been closed for the last eight years? I think. Uh, I, I well, I, I I think it was honestly built uh, uh, in a different budget era in Illinois. Uh, there's uh, Governor Quinn and others can probably. Can probably speak to this. I, I will tell you this: it's not the only facility in Illinois like it uh, that uh, that has been built and isn't currently housing uh, inmates. Uh, there is an overpopulation of prisoners in this country right now, right? Uh, I don't know if that's true in the federal facilities. Obviously, that is true in uh, uh, in some state facilities. Obviously, California comes to mind uh, based on uh, budgetary problems that they've certainly had. 
I, I think one of the things that this is uh, this is an if you look at some of the people that have that have supported today's decision, uh, you have taxpayer advocates that understand that the price of operating a facility in Guantanamo is probably about twice as expensive as it would be to operate a facility in Thompson. Do you have a price for what it would cost to operate this? I don't have a, a, a in terms of I I think it's roughly I, I've, in the briefing that I had it was half of what it currently. Roughly half of what it currently costs to operate Guantanamo Bay. Figure for that. I don't have a total figure. Yeah. Does the president <clears throat> does the president understand at all those who have concerns, uh, security concerns about uh, up to 100 detainees at Guantanamo Bay? Oh, I'm sorry, up to 100 uh, detainees at Guantanamo Bay. I like that you still checked it. That was. It says private well, number. It's the only person Somebody's I Somebody's trying to change It might question. be you. Yes, I think uh, you're, you're doing a little bit of hoodwinkery. <laughs> yes. Um, so anyway, the, the, uh, does he understand at all the concerns that some Americans have about whether or not uh, this puts Illinois in any sort of jeopardy security-wise, 100 well, or so detainees coming to yeah. one facility? Well, I think what we have to do, Jake, is separate what might be legitimate concern with what is... Um, nothing more than uh, scare tactics and hyperbole that we haven't seen in quite some time, even in a glorious town like Washington. Uh, understand that there are, uh, I think, more than 350 uh, prisoners convicted of terrorist acts currently serving in prisons uh, in the United States. Let me get the list of... Uh, but they're not all in one facility. They're no, spread out all over. Right, but understand that just alone in, see if anybody recognizes these names, currently housed in a super max facility in Colorado. I would say nobody's ever, nobody's ever gotten out of one of these prisons, right? Uh, Eric Rudolph, the Olympic bomber. Terry Nichols, the co-conspirator at uh, Oklahoma City. Zachariah Musawi, uh, the other hijacker, and Richard Reed, who tried to light a shoe on fire that contained a bomb to blow up a 767 over the Atlantic. Those are all housed in one facility. Understand also, the president has great confidence in the military of this country. Those are the people that operate Guantanamo Bay. Those are the people that would operate a facility at Thompson. I think if, if there are concerns for security reasons, uh, I would hope some of those people would address why they think the military can do what they're doing at Guantanamo and can't do it at Thompson. I will say this. I have seen some far crazier comments today, uh, comments from people like John Boehner. Here's what I would suggest for John Boehner. Call up Leon Panetta or Danny Blair at the CIA or the Director of National Intelligence. Ask them if he can come down and watch a video put out by al-Qaeda senior leadership like uh, the, the, the names that we recognize, Zawahiri, uh, 32 times since 2001 and four times this year alone, senior al-Qaeda leadership and recruiting videos have used the prison at Guantanamo Bay as a clarion call to bring extremists from around the world to join their effort. Closing Guantanamo Bay makes this country safer. And if he's confused about that, or if anybody's confused about that, he can ask the Secretary of Defense in the previous administration, the Chair of the Joint Chiefs of Staff from the previous administration, the Commander for uh, Afghanistan and Iraq that oversees that region of the world from the previous administration, uh, why they support closing Guantanamo Bay and support today's decision. The, um, in, this, in a conference call that the White House established earlier today, uh, senior administration officials told reporters on the call uh, that the, the, the goal of the Obama administration is to house those detainees in that fourth category, the ones who cannot be tried and yet cannot be released, uh, of whom there have not been any identified as of yet and signed off by the president. But the goal would be to ultimately to house them at Thompson, uh, and the administration will work with Congress right. to do that. 
how would that be constitutional to indefinitely hold somebody in the United States? Well, uh, without trial. right. Understand that uh, the president does not seek new authority. Uh, that under uh, uh, under the auspices of uh, the declaration from 2001, uh, that would be allowable. But understand this, Jake. What we have said is. Again, that's a, the collective decision of Congress, not one individual, the president, a collective body in Congress. Uh, that would be and can be reviewed as it is now by the judiciary and has been, as you know, a number of the transfers have been required by uh, U.S. courts that have said uh, there's no reason to continue to hold this individual. Uh, so there are certainly uh, that's, that is built into uh, the newer regime uh, that the president uh, is moving forward on. Yes, sir. Thank you, Robert. We saw the uh, First Lady emerging from the um, EOB meeting with the president. Was that a spontaneous decision for her to, to attend? And did she <coughs> no, no, no. no. She, she did not attend. I, she was, um, uh, when I walked out and the president walked out, she was in, uh, she was in West Exec. Uh, but she was not in the, uh, no, I think she was, uh, uh, she was talking to, when I walked out, Senator Stabenow, and uh, then the president walked over with her. If I could follow up on um, deficit reduction. I will say that the first lady told the president that uh, I had let them off taking pictures tonight uh, and then giggled and walked off uh, over to the East Wing and left me to explain to the president that that was, in fact, not the case. <laughs> so. Um, and on deficit reduction, there's some um, moderates, Democratic moderates in the Senate who say they will only support a large increase in the, uh, in the debt ceiling uh, unless there is a uh, bipartisan deficit reduction commission legislation establishing a bipartisan deficit reduction commission. Does the White House have a position on, on where that is? Well, uh, obviously a number of things have been talked about. Uh, you all have heard the president and his team talk about the concerns that they have about fiscal responsibility uh, as we steer our economy towards recovery. Uh, we share Congress's concern about uh, the medium and long-term effects of uh, rising deficits and debt uh, and look forward to working with them to address uh, how best to, uh, to deal with those circumstances, uh, but I don't have anything specific or anything new on commissions. Yes, ma'am. Um, on Gitmo, isn't the uh, recruiting appeal of Gitmo in terms of Al Qaeda the policy of indefinite detention, which will continue to some degree at Thompson? Uh, well, I, I, I think that uh, understand that what the president has set forth uh, in reviewing the files of those that are there uh, is uh, to bring justice uh, on behalf of the American people to those that are in Guantanamo. Uh, so that is, uh, again, reviewing those files, and if a court determines that there's no legal right to hold them, uh, then we have worked with other countries to find uh, either their home countries or third-party uh, third countries to transfer detainees that courts have decided uh, or uh, the committee has decided uh, should not be held. There's still a, uh, a subset that's non-tribal, non-transferable. Right. Also understand that uh, there will be uh, as you've heard the Attorney General make decisions on trying certain detainees in military commissions, certain detainees in Article Three courts, uh, and uh, as the President said, there certainly are those uh, that may fall into that other bucket, but uh, what the President has set out and what the President's team will do uh, is go through each of those cases uh, and ensure that for justice on behalf of the American people, uh, uh, whether it's in an Article III court or in a military commission, uh, there are uh, trials or commissions that take place to render punishment. On health care, real quick, was part of the goal of this meeting to placate or mollify progressives who've really had to give up a lot in terms of the public option, now the Medicare buy-in, and is the President trying to tell them this is worth fighting for? I mean, Dean is now saying, we should just kill the Senate bill. That this health care reform not worth mm -hmm. doing. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I you know look. I'm I'm. Uh, I wouldn't argue medicine with Dr. Dean. Uh, I would argue policy with him. Uh, in 2004, 
Howard Dean as a candidate sought to build on an employer-based health care system in order to cover uh, millions of Americans that currently lacked coverage. There are two differences between what the President is doing in 2009 and what Howard Dean proposed in 2004. Uh, uh, the biggest difference is, uh, well, the first difference is we have an increase in the number of uninsured. The second biggest difference is we've added, uh, the bill is paid for, the bill reduces the deficit, the bill bends the cost curve, the bill adds insurance reforms. Uh, what people like Howard Dean wanted, what members of the Senate and the House want now, uh, is a mix of increased accessibility for the millions of Americans that go every day without the safety net of health insurance. What others in the Senate and the House want are ways that we can control and contain costs for health care. Those are currently contained in the Senate bill. The President believes that uh, whether you're on the left of the Democratic spectrum or the right of the Democratic spectrum uh, in the Senate uh, or uh, concerned about health care in this country, that there's plenty to like in this legislation. Is he trying to keep progressives on board? No, I, you know, look, from what I read in the paper today, uh, uh, I, I, look, I don't hate to single people out, but Senator Harkin uh, is in the paper today. I think Senator Brown is in the paper from Ohio saying, uh, let's, let's not be fooled that there, there is a lot of stuff in this bill. Let's not get sidetracked by, and I think this is what the President said, there's very little legislation that's passed that has each and every idea that each and every member of the Senate or the House wants to have in it. Uh, on balance, uh, does this legislation make a big difference in the lives of everyday working men and women? Uh, it's, not even, it's not even a close call on that. Yes, sir. Does the President agree with Senator Reid that there are consequences if this bill is not passed before Christmas? And if so, what are the consequences? Coal in your stocking. Um, look, I, I think the President believes that, that, we are, uh, that we are at an important point. Uh, I do believe the President, uh, the president said today, we're never, we're never going to be in this position again. Why wouldn't we take this opportunity to do what we've talked about for 70 years? Meaning that after Christmas, we're, we're going to be in, it's going to be harder. Well, I, I don't think the President didn't talk specifically about pre or post Christmas. What the President talked about was seizing the opportunity now. But why, why would there be less opportunity, say, in the week after Christmas? Well, I, I think the President would like to get this done. <laughs> uh, I think the sooner we get uh, legislation through the whole of the Senate, uh, the sooner we start uh, a process to conferencing two bills together and uh, getting something more quickly to his desk. Okay. And just quickly, a month or two ago, yeah. when people talked about a second stimulus, you would say, Let's give the first stimulus a chance to work. Now, yeah. I think it's, by the way, I think in many ways if you look at, uh, if you look at forecasts uh, that are put together by uh, economists throughout the economy, I, I think they would render the judgment, by the way, that if you look at third quarter growth alone, uh, that that is a heavy result of the stimulus and recovery plan that went into effect. A lot of the stimulus doesn't hit until tax season. That's when people get their refunds. Right. And a lot of the so-called shovel-ready projects will actually probably see them kicked off in the spring. Right. So why are we talking about a second stimulus now? I mean, why? Well, again, you haven't heard the president talk about a second stimulus. You've heard the president discuss targeted ideas that uh, he believes and the economic team believe will have a positive impact on uh, private sector hiring and creating an environment that would allow the private sector to make those hiring decisions positively. Uh, I, the president uh, hasn't called it that, and I don't believe it is. I, I understand this: we we have this legislation split uh, by roughly in buckets of a third, a third, and a third. There were tax cuts. Uh, there was aid to state and localities, primarily through things like FMAP. Uh, and then there were uh, projects like infrastructure and that sort of more in that third bucket. Uh, all of that was designed not to spend out in one quarter. Uh, it was designed to spend out over a two-year period of time. Uh, 
Nobody wanted to see a one quarter jolt for a problem that we knew was not going to be rectified in one quarter. Uh, and, I, you know, I have to say, I'd admonish people that I, I heard this uh, throughout Sunday show broadcast, this notion that somehow only 20 percent of the money has been spent. I think we've been over this before. I think we're doing some briefings in the next couple of days. Uh, the, the notion of spent money and obligated money, uh, uh, obligations that cause a shovel-ready project to hire a contractor and for that contractor to hire workers to implement that project uh, puts people to work. Uh, though that doesn't meet the technical definition of what is spent, it falls under the umbrella of obligated, and we feel and see that in the economy today. Mark. Robert, the President says we're closer than ever to health care reform, but does he make the argument that it's now or never? Uh, I think he believes that uh, we are never going to have an opportunity as good as the one we have right now. But nobody is saying Plus he was he actually would, standing next if he to didn't get it care. this year, he's not going to give up. Uh, is that what you're saying? Or no, I, I, I can't imagine that it is. I think the president believes he's going to get it. Uh, uh, I think the president believes that uh, we have legislation that meets all the principles that many have been working for for decades, uh, that we have uh, we have the political will to do it, and we'll get it done. Why is um, Gitmo twice as expensive as another prison? Uh, I, I, I will certainly get a, a, a better answer from those guys. Obviously, uh, uh, it, uh, uh, it's, a, it's simply a facility that took a lot to construct and a lot to operate. Give us a little more on the conference call the president had with Merkel, Sarkozy, and Brown on mm -hmm. Copenhagen, how they're going to coordinate their strategy. Yeah. The, uh, uh, as you know, the President talked with uh, uh, Prime Minister Brown, Chancellor Merkel, and President Sarkozy uh, about the climate change negotiations that, were, that are currently going on in Copenhagen. Uh, this conference uh, was one of a number of conversations that the President has held with leaders uh, from around the world in the last few days. We did a readout of uh, his calls with uh, leaders of Ethiopia and Bangladesh. Uh, the President reviewed efforts by the United States on climate change. Uh, reiterated his commitment to making progress towards a successful conclusion of an operational agreement in Copenhagen. Other leaders described efforts that Europe was making, and I don't want to read out what they talked about. Uh, all committed to working together, uh, uh, and uh, obviously they will be all getting together in the coming days, uh, and the President believes that we can get, as I said, an operational agreement that makes sense. Uh, in Copenhagen over the next few days. So are, these, are they in the same page strategy-wise? Is this, I mean, are they all going to be pursuing it's all for one, one for all type thing between look, those four? Uh, I, you know, look, there's there's uh, a myriad of different debates that are going on uh, with different subgroups uh, of the international community. Uh, I think the president has been clear in uh, in setting forth a robust goal for the United States to meet by 2020. Uh, we have voiced our support for uh, uh, financing through uh, 2012, um, and we have worked with uh, China and India to bring them along in this process to the point where they have now released specific goals uh, for uh, decreasing their carbon intensity between now and 2020. Uh, obviously, there are issues that exist. Uh, you saw, I think all of you saw the uh, op-ed by Secretary Clinton, which laid out uh, our concerns uh, about transparency about any agreement. And, and the President believes that to get a, an agreement that is truly operational, uh, that we have to have that, that transparency. That's one of the things that he'll work on uh, as we go forward. Just a quick clarification, just, and maybe it's because of one of the readouts from the other countries, but you know, so Germany, France, just Germany, France, Britain, and, and the U.S. will be working together, but it's not like they're going to have one coordinated strategy. Is that what you Well, I, 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 don't, uh, uh, I don't want to get into what the three of them talked to the President directly about. I'll let those countries uh, read out for themselves what their leaders talked to the President about. Uh, I believe that all of these countries share the strong goal of getting something done uh, by the end of this week in Copenhagen. The President certainly shares that uh, and believes that, uh, uh, believes that we can make progress 
uh, assuming we meet some of those operational goals. So, Lynn? Um, back on uh, the Thompson's uh, yep. Correctional Center. Since it seems from what you and others have said that there will be a number of detainees who will not have a <coughs> trial, would that not create the possibility of a rallying <coughs> point by the same people that you're saying are using the Cuban Guantanamo as a rallying point? Why wouldn't that be the case since you will be well, having look, people held in, in, uh, indefinitely? Uh, well, first of all, the, the Nobody will ever be able to use, once the president fulfills his promise, no one will ever be able to use, to the degree to which they're using right now, Guantanamo Bay uh, as a rallying call. Uh, first and foremost, uh, understand this. In, in, since Guantanamo Bay was opened, uh, I forget the exact number. I don't know why I forget whether it's two or three that were, that went through some sort of judicial process, either through a military commission or an Article III court, okay? Two or three. Uh, we have transferred uh, those that courts have said shouldn't be held uh, back to uh, either their home country or third, uh, third party countries. Uh, we have designated uh, Mr. Galani who currently uh, sits in New York awaiting trial for uh, his role in embassy bombings in Kenya. Uh, the uh, Attorney General has designated uh, perpetrators uh, to serve, uh, to seek that justice will be sought in a military commission, uh, and some that will be tried, including those uh, like Khalid Sheikh Mohammed that participated in uh, the planning for and the masterminding behind September 11. Uh, I don't think that anybody will ever be able to use to the same degree that's happening at Guantanamo Bay right now uh, once that facility is closed and the process for seeking justice on behalf of the American people, uh, if that process begins. Understand that that process never actually began. Right, now, that, 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 that was just simply a holding facility. So I understand that it might not be to the same degree, but could an Illinois Gitmo become a symbol as long as you have it's called, people I think it's called Thompson. <laughs> what did I say? Illinois Gitmo, which I don't The tourism department thanks you for your snappy suggestion for their green and white sign. The Thompson facility, even, and I understand what you said, as long as it does hold detainees, even at a lesser degree, could it still not become a rallying point? Not nearly to the degree, uh, not in any way, shape, or form, nearly to the degree that currently exists. Thank you. Sam. Can you just clarify? You said the president's not seeking authority, but on the conference call earlier, administration officials told us that they, he will need a, a change in law. Well, what I'm saying, what, I'm sorry, let me be more specific. New authority for, uh, for any long-term detention. In other words, uh, uh, since Congress has authorized uh, that as a result of, uh, in 2001, the president isn't seeking new legislative authority to do that. Uh, that is still be, that's still anything, any decisions that are ultimately made about detention can be reviewed by the judiciary. Uh, there's no doubt, Sam, that the, um, the supplemental language and other appropriations bills that have yet to be signed into law uh, that prevent uh, detention from happening now uh, will need to be changed and the President will work with Congress in order to change uh, any law that prevents uh, a facility at Thompson from being used. And for funding. The uh, and for funding, absolutely. Yeah. Robert, when, you, when uh, Secretary Clinton said yesterday that the year spent reaching out to Iran produced very little. Do, do you agree that that's true, or has there been some benefit of the open hand approach to Iran? Uh, I, I don't know the remark you're referring to. Uh, I, if you look back, if you look at where we are now with our partners in the P5 plus one, particularly our Russian counterparts, and you look at where we were with our Russian counterparts more than a year ago about whether or not we were all moving together 
towards the next steps that must take place if time runs out and the Iranians decide not to live up to their international responsibilities. I don't think anybody can look at that situation and say that we haven't made uh, dramatic progress in bringing the world forward. Uh, I think that if you look at the, uh, the IAEA offer around the research reactor, there was a very clear choice for the Iranians, either to demonstrate to the world that their program was not a nuclear weapons program, but instead what they maintained was uh, a peaceful program, uh, or whether they were going to tell the world uh, through their actions uh, that what they sought for their nuclear program was something different. I think that decision isn't made by the IAEA. It was made, by the res it was made in the response by the Iranians. Uh, again, I don't think anybody could, could look at the situation and not believe that uh, we aren't in a different place with the international community. I think one has to only look at the statements of our P5 plus one partners or look at the strength and the unity in the vote, including Russia and China, around the Board of Governors' decision to actively sanction Iran. and for the first time call for the dissolution of their nuclear program. I think that represents real and genuine progress uh, that the President believes will pay dividends uh, in the coming weeks. Can I also just sure. On uh, health care, you said that Senator Lieberman was in the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, was there any uh, interchange between the President and Senator Lieberman? And Senator Lieberman spoke. Uh, I will direct you to his office as to uh, the way he saw the bill. Um, I would say that I don't think the president would come out and say he was optimistic if he hadn't heard what uh, Senator Lieberman said. Yep. Robert, will all Gitmo detainees who are getting a military commission trial go to Thompson? Uh, I think it is. Uh, I don't know that every final decision has been made, but uh, the decision the president made to close Guantanamo Bay, uh, we would not keep open a section of that facility in order to conduct uh, military commissions. Uh, there is a facility there that could be at Thompson that could be used for military commissions. I think the plan for the Bureau of Prisons would likely to be con to construct another facility to do motions in addition to uh, those military commissions uh, and that that facility could could serve both functions. And also within the Thompson facility, yes. right? And what is it currently, the one that would be used for? Um, right now it's currently being, the, the, the commissions, the, the motions and the process for those commissions uh, uh, take place uh, at Guantanamo. No, I mean, at Thompson, what's, what is within Thompson? That, uh, uh, there's a facility, a, a courtroom-like facility that could be used for uh, uh, those activities. And so all Gitmo detainees who are coming here for indefinite or long-term detention would go to Thompson as well, is uh, that right? Again, that's the, uh, uh, that's, uh, uh, those files would, you'd go through those files and, uh, but the, the action that the President took today is to seek purchase of that facility uh, for the movement of detainees from Guantanamo. And will detainees convicted by military tribunal serve their time at Thompson? Uh, let me check with the lawyers exactly on that. I know that if you are tried in an Article III court, upon every conviction, you're given a security rating, right? If somebody's convicted and they go to a minimum security prison or medium security prison or a maximum security prison. So you could, uh, uh, you could conceivably be tried in an Article III court and transferred to uh, the Supermax facility of, in Colorado uh, or, uh, or at Thompson. If I could just ask one last question. I know you don't have a date for emptying Guantanamo, right. but is, is it possible to say what the earliest might be that the would be arriving? Let me check and see if they have anything. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you, Robert. The defense probations bill is coming up, and there is talk on Capitol Hill of attaching Senator Akaka's uh, Native Hawaiian Government Reorganization Act, which, as you know, is very controversial, critics say, it creates a special <clears throat> status for Native Hawaiians, permitting them to sue the federal government. Is that something the President intends to sign if it's attached uh, to the defense I, bill? I, I, 
we'll we'll get some clarity on. Uh, I have not talked to legislative affairs about Senator Akaka's uh, legislation and whether that would be part of DOD. Is that something uh, that the president favors separately? Uh, I believe he's uh, co-sponsored that in the past as a member of the Senate, uh, but I have not. Uh, we've talked about Hawaii, but not that part of Hawaii recently. Robert, at the health care meeting today, um, did the president have any, have any message to other moderates beyond Senator Lieberman that perhaps uh, the liberals uh, have, have taken enough and that we shouldn't have to compromise the bill any further? Was there anything along those lines? Well, I think the president was clear with members of uh, the Democratic Party and with independents that caucus with the Democratic Party. Uh, that uh, he's supportive of the Senate bill and believes that uh, believes that there are a lot of things in this bill that will make our health care system uh, far better and seek far greater reform than anything we contemplate now. Understand this, the President very clearly set forward, what happens if we do nothing? What do we know what happens? More people will become uninsured. More businesses will drop their coverage. Uh, more people will be discriminated against by their insurance company. Uh, I, I think the president, uh, uh, his main message was uh, there are, uh, this is a good piece of legislation uh, that meets the goals that he set out and that many have uh, campaigned for and worked for uh, for their many years in, uh, in elective office and in the United States Senate. Did he say anything along the lines of he doesn't want to see any further changes to placate the moderate wing? Of the I, I don't recall that, uh, him saying anything. About and did he say anything about this should be enough with Medicare <coughs> buy-in no longer there, public option no longer there? Did he say anything about trying to get Republican support so that he can claim that it's a bipartisan bill? Well, look, the president, uh, the president continues to reach out to and the president uh, continues to have conversations, as do staff here. Uh, with uh, with Republicans on Capitol Hill about seeking their support, absolutely. Stephen. Thanks. Um, there appears to have been some progress, perhaps as recently as today, on the start negotiations. Are reports coming out of Russia that there might be a deal by the end of this week and possibly the signing ceremony in Copenhagen realistic? Uh, we certainly hope that we continue to make progress uh, on the negotiations. Uh, hopeful that it gets done soon. I don't know if it gets done this week. Uh, Stephen, I'll be honest with you, we're not planning uh, currently for a signing ceremony in Copenhagen and uh, we're not planning to visit any nearby countries uh, on that trip uh, uh, in, in, in signing uh, a new START treaty. Sam? Oh, well, my question was largely answered, but I want to nail you down on this one aspect, which well, is... Well, wait a minute. What? <laughs> I'm kidding. <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> If I answered your question, why do we want to do it all over? Because I need the, I need the face time. I, um, <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking the same thing. <laughs> uh, but to nail you down on this one thing, earlier you talked about uh, the message that the president had to Howard Dean and other progressives mm. that this is not worth sinking over one provision not being in the bill, that there's so much good in this bill mm -hmm. that it needs to pass. And I guess the question that we all have, we all have is, is the same a message applicable to people like Senator Lieberman who are threatening to derail the entire product because one thing's in it that they don't like? Look, uh, yes, the president was clear with, again, the president was clear with members uh, of the Democratic caucus, those that caucus, independents that caucus with the Democrats. Um, I think you heard, well, I certainly heard uh, people that you would say are uh, you would align to moderates in the Democratic caucus and those that you would align to uh, more progressives in the, in the, the Democratic caucus uh, who spoke out in favor of, of this legislation and in voting for it and moving it forward. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, see, I, I, maybe I should just say I hope you see it my way. Thank you, Robert. Yeah. yeah. Well, the other part... <laughs> The other part of Dr. Dean's that statement was that you guys publish. <laughs> the, the other part of Dr. Dean's statement is that he wants to see the Senate start over and go through reconciliation. There's been a lot of talk about the use of that. It seems like the White House is hesitant. Will you put it to rest? You're not going to use reconciliation. Uh, I will put to rest that the president believes that under the current course, uh, we will get uh, health care legislation uh, very soon out of the Senate that meets uh, all of the. Uh, 
all of the uh, important points that he believes uh, have to be addressed in health care reform. Public option. You could still meet those goals. Uh, because the president has said before yeah. it's only a preferred choice. But the president believes that the bill ought to contain choice and competition. Right. Uh, uh, I, I, I think the president believes that, again, uh, where this legislation is, uh, is something that members uh, from both sides of the caucus ought to and should support because it makes important progress that includes choice and competition. I'll take one more, Ken. Robert, have you started moving forward and have discussions we've had with the House since there'll probably be some problems with the liberal wing of the party uh, in terms I, of this piece of legislation? I, I, uh, I, I think certainly the House has watched the debate back and forth in the Senate, uh, uh, but a, uh, 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 in terms of reconciling whatever legislation happens, uh, that's the process that's not begun. You asked us to uh, contact Senator Lieberman about his comments, but could you give us a little bit more on uh, the president's comments to Senator Lieberman, uh, maybe the tone? Well, the, uh, <laughs> uh, no, no, the, the Senator Lieberman spoke uh, about what he saw was uh, positive in the bill, the concerns that he had. Uh, uh, again, I'll let, I'll let Senator Lieberman tell you how he concluded. Uh, uh, the, the president's tone, uh, the president didn't, didn't address directly, uh, I mean, he answered questions. Senator Lieberman didn't have a question for the president. The, Senator Lieberman made a statement to the caucus about uh, where he was on the legislation. Thanks, guys.